action. Welcome everybody to Spiritus Network. I'm your host, Stephen McPherson, joined by Juan Negrillo and Cynthia Cavacacci. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so let's let's begin with a short prayer. I'm your host, Stephen McPherson. Sorry. <sighs> so, <laughs> yeah, I should share this on Facebook. But in a minute. Um, do you want me to pray? Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll pray. So everybody just take a moment and it's good to close your eyes if you like and just take a minute and forget everything from the outside world and all the distractions and just take a minute to connect with your spirit the the intelligent principle inside of us is always watching always observing never judging and just letting things happen and participating and remembering why we're here that we're here to learn we're here to grow and we're here to make a conscious evolution that we can evolve as we live this life that we won't live this life on autopilot that every day we use as another opportunity to grow and to advance ourselves and to live and to love others and so we're very grateful to be here we're grateful to have this place that we can meet and we can meet other people who like us are interested in growing and evolving and sharing love and practicing charity and always following in the footsteps of our master Jesus Christ who told us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves and do unto others as we would have them do unto us so with the sentiment of charity, of humility, with patience and peace in our hearts, we ask for permission to begin our work tonight. So be it. So be it. So be it. So welcome everybody. We've been away two weeks. Um, so we had a bit of bad weather, but we're, we're recovering. <laughs> So it's it's good to finally be back here. Um, Take maybe. two weeks. Really? Last week you guys were not here. No, oh, last week nobody was here. Last week nobody was here. Yeah. <laughs> last week was rough, but um, and we were we were planning on missing last week anyway for our special guest, but yeah, because right. of the but the week before we were here. Yeah. Week, yeah. It was Everything, two weeks. Well, oh, okay. In my mind, it's one week, <laughs> like <laughs> one session with me. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, let's do one session. Yeah. Okay, um. got it. <laughs> so yeah, on my we're here now. So <laughs> that's what's important, right? Um, and then, um, so, and I know we've all been studying constantly since uh, <laughs> since our um, our last meeting so now I believe um, I didn't really look at the video but according to where I kind of left off here we might have been on like on item 25 yes so we we're, we're reading the book what is spiritism by Alan Kardec and um, we're in chapter 2 so if you have this version of the book, the Edison version, um, I'm on page 160, and um, it's a real scorcher. <laughs> so, um, here, we can't finish with that. And um, so I can't remember, really remember what we were talking about the last <laughs> the last time. Um, 
because basically this chapter so far has been a lot of um, things that you would find in the introduction to the spirits book, uh, like principles, fundamentals of spiritism, like very kind of basic things, but they're sort of basic things that like we can always, like we can kind of never get enough of because it's, it's always good to kind of review the basics or if we're, if we're new, we're kind of hearing it for the first time and we're sort of putting the whole, like all the pieces of the puzzle together. And if you're like me, I've been coming to meetings for a couple of years and um, this is really helping me kind of like firm the foundation of my, of my knowledge of, of the subject. Um, so like a lot of things that I had uh, sort of been mistaken about as I read it, um, I, I kind of clear up, you know, and, and get with some of the concepts a little bit better. Um, so on item 25, we're, we're, he's talking in this section, it's about um, communication with the invisible world. Um, and he starts off by saying, the communications between the visible and invisible worlds may be secretive or open, spontaneous or in induced. Um, the next paragraph, he says, spirits act upon humans secretively through the thoughts they suggest to them and through certain influences. They act openly through effects discernible to the senses. So that kind of got me thinking, um, like our thoughts are an open book to spirits. Um, but then again, it's hard to know, like, do we notice when our thoughts are our own or when our thoughts are kind of coming from an outside source when we're kind of like picking something up? Like, I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, I'm not sure if I notice or I don't know if you guys ever notice that. I think a lot of people kind of don't realize like that they might be picking something up saying like, oh, yeah, go to the fridge, you know, have a cigarette, have a beer, you know, <laughs> like um, call that girl. <laughs> um, that is so true sometimes it's clear but most of the time no one day I remember that I noticed that it was a such a such a subtle thought but it wasn't quite me because I felt wait a minute I, I, I could I yeah this could be my thought but the energy in that in that line, in that in that connection with that thought, it was awkward with my energy, and it was something that was very basic, very silly. But I was like, "Oh wow, this is not mine," um, and I I was wondering, I was actually I was speechless with myself as if if. I was able to catch this something really silly. For example, oh, oh, I like this music. It wasn't mine. Imagine something very serious in my life that uh, that a spirit can come and little by little mix my thoughts with uh, their thought and then mix it up to a certain level that I don't realize what is mine and what is not mine. This is very serious. I mean, how do you... How do you work on that so that you become more aware? Know thyself. That's the only way. Learning about ourselves, learning about our thoughts, our energy. But even though, even though, it would be hard. That's... The, that's a journey that we will have to learn every step of the way and this is this is gonna be in the future like yeah, maybe it's something too like if you focus on it too much like your head will just explode you kind of have to like just <laughs> like forget about it and you live your life a little bit you know yeah that's it, true because i mean even um we, we had a great um, speaker a few months ago that came here from portugal and i can't remember his name quite exactly oh. they were Mourinho. Yeah, Molina. I forgot his name. Paolo, maybe I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Paolo. Paolo, Paolo. And and he was talking about inspiration and creativity, and talking about how you know artists a lot of times get their inspiration from you know some type of muse, and it might be a spiritual source. Um, so you know, some and sometimes I kind of feel inspired to do things 
like create something and you know, I don't know who there's a big became a spiritist, I don't seem to have the time anymore. But <laughs> but, um, but you know, in one sense though it's like it, it might not even matter too much because I mean we talked about this before too, that a lot of times uh, spiritists they take this knowledge and they use it as an excuse um, to say like, okay, well if I'm doing that it's because an obsessor made me do it or or, you know, my, my bad actions, but I guess it, it's just like really for us too to decide like what do we want to do with our, our lives, like if we're trying to change a behavior or do something like that, we really need to stay focused and I mean, <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to say like where, when the obsessors are, are trying to push us like back into our vices or if it's us, but the reality is like we always, you know, pick up whatever we're vibrating with and, and so so we can't really blame others but it's, it's something it's, it's definitely food for thought definitely yeah so we have two challenges the first one is to distinguish whether it's our own um, thought or feeling or it's induced and then the second one is to be able to not follow what we don't really want to follow or, or the other way around. And I would say there are more things, for example, it's to learn about the spiritual world, is to understand how do the spirits, how do they work and how, how things work in a spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. That's another thing too. So many things you could do. Of the, the, the world of probabilities is endless, but let's start by learning about our nature and then the nature of the spirits that could give us a, a very good picture of how things work but if we are careless and going through life not learning about ourselves and, and not understanding or being aware that there is a spiritual world it's kind of it's impossible. It's really impossible. And nowadays we see so many people saying, I have so many thoughts. I can't stop thinking. I think too much. Is that all ours? All those thoughts? Mm. What is ours? What is not? Yeah, I mean, at least being a spiritist, you, you could say that there might be a spiritual like source for you know it might be yeah. a spiritual if you want to say problem or whatever yeah you know it's like it's, it's like i was talking to a friend of mine and she was telling me about some dreams that she had about some people like just after they died and she was like telling me about this and and it, you can't say like oh it's definitely this because i read it in andre louise but um, I, I suggested i said it might be a spiritual thing you know it could be you know like it, you just kind of like i'm not the authority on on saying like definitely was it definitely wasn't but I can say like here's some examples of when it, when it was something you know when it when a dream actually was more than just a dream uh, more than just like a subconscious like <laughs> you know kind of crazy like manifestation but, um, mm. but at least at least being a spiritist you can kind of look at things and say yeah. there might be a, a spiritual cause and, they, and and they, and that's kind of what Alan Clark is suggesting here is that they'll act on us secretly you know so it's really without us being aware um, so it's just good to know that at least like the thoughts might not be ours but um, I guess it's sort of hard because I kind of try to judge my progress of like how I'm doing uh, uh, based on what kind of thoughts I'm having and you know, sometimes when I'm at work, they're not so good. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about my coworkers and, and things like that. And, and then um, uh, I guess I got to take credit for that. <laughs> yeah, know? but uh, we also should keep in mind that even if the thoughts that they don't belong to us, but they are attracted by the same uh, the same type of energy. Like for example, let's say. I am I, I am a person that I only think positive and I hate people like that. That no I'm not <laughs> saying it's me, but let's say if I nurture a positive thinking, 
it will be really hard for a spirit that is uh, that is all about negative thinking to put a negative thought in my mind if I nurture the habit of positive thinking it will be very hard for the spirit to do that but if a spirit wants I will attract the positive thinking let's say for instance and if I if I nurture negative thinking and I will attract likewise so if we have thoughts in our head that, that do not belong to us but they are alike they are similar they are in the same nature because we would we will attract the likes same type of energy so even though we say oh this thought is not mine well but then how how did you connect it with that thought so it is in you it is in your nature do you nurture that kind of thought otherwise it, 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 like for example if a, a, a medium like a sensitive person like I am if I hear something in my head that it's totally different than my personality I catch up right away I said I had sometimes I hear clearly in my head uh, let's smoke a cigarette I hear clearly clearly and I'm like this is not mine and I smoked that was my thought why would they why would they tell you that oh no. because they try no, you know you they never try that. they try if they are well the uh, the spirits they say if we could see we would uh, uh, hit spirits all the time the, the the planet is crowded by spirits so the Emmanuel says that three times the population of the earth so if we are seven billion three times seven billion but they say 23 billion spirits populating the earth so there will be someone that will pass by thinking I want to smoke a cigarette and if I catch if I catch that if I capture that thought that is not mine is a spirit that is passing by you know we hear all uh, we hear all the time that people say oh I wanna I wanna I don't know why but I wanna drink a coca-cola and I don't even like a coca-cola it happens to me it happens to me sometimes I want to eat something that I don't really like and I go like I'm gonna eat this right now I just feel like eating this right now it could not be me but if it's possible in me that I connect with that thought I will go for it if it's in me in my nature I will go for it like if it's not in me you do I had I heard horrible things too before I heard horrible things that wasn't my thought but then I heard and I said no, that's ridiculous I'm not gonna do that but as Kardec says here in the same 25 they say that some some uh, the manifestation are sought and planned occur through certain individuals called mediums also known as psychics or sensitives who are gifted with the special faculties and we can develop those faculties too but sometimes it's clear to me and I hear I hear uh, advices and I hear stuff if it's good I take it if it's not good I say no I'll pass that it's simple but let's think about it how many times in your life Steve you heard something that it that you said this is crazy I'm not gonna do this all the time right <laughs> yeah I, I try no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we all do yeah. Anyway. yeah no you're right sometimes I mean sometimes like I get like something like totally like out of, out of the blue like just I'm like, well, like is that mine you know I'm like yeah I talk, I'm talking to myself you know mm. I probably look crazy if anybody saw me. But, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, where did that come from? I'm like, oh my god. You know, like sometimes I'll be like in a really sort of positive place. Like I've been there before, um, and and something like really like negative or violent or something like that will kind of yeah. like come up. Like mm. I'm just like, come on, like stop that. You know. I hear but, you. Um, hmm. But you know, and I mean, I guess in this. In this chapter, like Alan Kardec is really kind of talking about like the fundamental, like the the nuts and bolts, I say, of right. mediumship. Right. And 
for me, like, to, I was, I read it one time, and I was just like, oh, what's there to discuss in this? It's also, but I, I said, like, we got to, I guess we kind of have to, like, sort of go through it, because if we're here, we study spiritism, um, it's, it's kind of like, this is sort of like the, the mechanisms of it, you know, where it's not so, um, like, there's, there's nothing really, like, when I, when I read it, I kind of just buy it, and I'm kind of like, it's not really controversial to me, mm -hmm. but somebody else might like see it differently mm -hmm. than um, somebody who either has like more experience or less experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, um, but we're, we're really talking about, you know, mediumship. Um, um, talking about how spirits manifest mm -hmm. um, through mediums. Um, they, and he says that, um, Manifestation, manifestations occur um, unexpectedly and fortuitously, you know, spontaneous manifestations, um, but quite often they occur to per persons unfamiliar with spiritist ideas and for that very reason cannot understand them. Um, so I, I kind of want to say, like, how often do you think that spirit phenomena are really, like, just misunderstood in our, in our world, that, in our material world that we live exactly. in? Exactly. You know, like... Like how many things like we we talk about a lot about mediumship and insanity the people that have a gift of mediumship that are given electroshock therapy and and psych meds and stuff like that to try to yeah. make the voices go away um that's one example but i'm just, like that's that's kind of like a i would say like a i don't want to say it's a bad example but it's like it's not a pretty one you know it's a um, yeah that's a, right a, a phenomena is misunderstood there's also other examples like people that um, talk about miracles. You know, in the spirit that we don't really have miracles. We just say these are things that occur naturally in our world that just are misunderstood. So we kind of like de debunk the miracles, <laughs> which is kind of sad in a way. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I always thought the miracles were great. You know, and, yeah. And Jesus it's was cool. like Superman, but now it's like, oh, he's yeah. he's just like a really awesome, like regular man. Miracles are cool. <laughs> you know? The oh, word yeah. miracles. Cool uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. What you're saying this is very fascinating because we don't have the full understand, understanding, understand. I don't uh, know. Understanding. The full under. We don't understand completely. <laughs> it's a comedian when he doesn't know the word, he changes and says it in a different way. Uh, anyways, we don't have a full understanding of the. The mechanisms of this, the the miracle, as you said. Um, so it it is fascinating because there are so many levels of mediumship, communication with spirits, inf influences. Uh, we influence each other. Our thoughts influence. Our emotions influence each other. So this is. Uh, there are so many levels of of things of uh, let's say of of parallel worlds of parallel natures that we don't understand that we don't know and we interact with all those things and this is this is a is designed like that to influence each other there is there is a divine uh goal that i see that's the way that i see but uh, it is fascinating that we have no idea how things work and how the spiritual world is affecting us and vice versa and how we are affecting others. We already started to understand the Heart Math Institute uh, came with this uh, breakthrough research about the heart that our uh, emotions influence others. But then with that, with the basic uh, um, study, we, we ask ourselves, what about the, all the other things there are in the world and we are interconnected and we don't know. This is fascinating. I agree with you there. It's fascinating. For the most part, we don't know. Yeah. We we, we can. Um, y you were saying that most of the things we read here, they 
they don't, I don't know you said, they, they sound okay, so... Um, to me they sound okay. They sound okay? <laughs> yeah. And I agree, they sound okay with me, to me, but um, I think we, we are gathering the information we get from spirits and uh, putting it together with our own experience and with the experiences of many people who uh, experiment and, and and who um, have these kind of connections and we're trying to make sense of it and we're trying to have kind of like a system or a theory or um, a, a, a thought system around it that makes sense and it does make sense but it's in a way it's, it's our interpretation of it so there could be maybe we know one percent and we still not even with you know the, with the spirit with information from the spirits mm. and, and with everything that we put together mm. we may be just scratching the surface of it uh, so it is fascinating because it's you know, it's endless and and uh, my belief is that for the most part, we don't know. We just know a little bit. I agree. A very tiny bit. I agree. But, yeah. but at the same time, we think we know. Yeah. And oh yeah. And that's that's the you know the interesting oh, yes. issue. So mm. we think we know pretty much everything. Okay, this all makes sense, so we can explain everything. There's an answer for everything. And yet, uh, mm. I don't think that's true. You you made me think of. Um, something I read in, in Zen in the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance that he's talking about <laughs> how he has an understanding of how a motorcycle engine works mm -hmm. and there's the actual real-life motorcycle engine but in his mind there's a motorcycle engine that he created and he understands how it works but sometimes the actual motorcycle engine doesn't work the way the one in his mind works and he learns something new so that model in his mind changes to adapt to the the real life one. But then he says like everybody has their own, you know, model in their in their mind of, of everything. So there's like the there's like the real concrete thing and then there's the way we perceive it and and the more we learn about it it changes the, the model um, in our mind. But um, and, and spirit is really the same way. We're talking about interaction with the invisible world and, and how things work and you know, like even um like us, you know, we're all raised in different religions or with different backgrounds, different beliefs. We have our view of, of how to interact with <laughs> with God, or, or we don't even believe in God, or whatever, you know. And, and it all kind of changes the more we we learn and as we experience it. But um, I wish I knew the term he uses in in the book for um, <laughs> um, for the model. I have to look that up. But um, it's a deep book. <laughs> It's actually not about Zen and not about motorcycle maintenance at all. But, you know, it's just—it's a clever title. <laughs> so, my next book, Zen and Spiritism. You know, look for it on shelves mm. near you. Good one, good one. Um, so, item twenty-six. I think we can move on. Um, spirits can manifest in many different ways by means of sight, hearing, touch, noises, movements of objects, writing, drawing, music, etc. So he leaves that open because it's an open stuff. So, you know, like that's that's what he's that's what Alan Kardec saw at, at his time, and there might be more. Now, if the spirits can do all of those things, why don't they do it more? Why don't we see it? Why is not like so common that it's all over the place? Well, why? What do you mean by more? Yeah, I mean, what I mean is, uh, if you conduct a survey, you know, take, take a, a sample of the population anywhere in the world, but say, say the US, we're here, uh, and you ask people if they've seen any of these manifestations by spirits that, that you have there, um, I don't know the percentage, but a very high percentage of the people are going to reply that no, they have not seen any of those manifestations by spirits. 
So why, that's where my question comes from. If they can do all of that, why don't they do it more? I mean, I'm not saying that they have to do it more. I'm saying, you know, if, if spirits can do all of those things, why don't we, why don't people see it more? I, I'd have to step back to item 25, where they say spirits act upon humans secretively mm -hmm. through the thoughts they suggest to them. So it's not like, like we had Hobbes and Pinero, and that was like a really great thing to see, like watch him like do that and, and paint these, these paintings, and they come out like amazing. It's like, you know, I actually watched a video this weekend about um, spiritual surgery, <laughs> and like it was pretty gruesome. Like you have to have a strong stomach to watch some of this stuff. Um, but, you know, like, and I've seen some stuff like that, like before, it's just, it's been a while, so it kind of refreshed my memory, but, but it's like, when you see stuff like this, and, and even like being a spiritist and watching some of these things, I'm like, oh my God, like, is this even real? Like, it's, like you know, some of the, you know, some of the, the, the things that they, that they do and they act, you know, and actually I had a sort of a similar thought when I saw the spiritual surgery, because I, I actually, I said to the guy I was with, I said, we need to get a guy like this at our center. <laughs> you know, but but um, I was, and then I thought like, how come we don't have more of these guys? You know, doing this like doing these surgeries, um, helping people like this. You know, because like the guy I was watching on the video like passed away a few years later. They told me so. Um, I mean, I guess I guess what I was trying to say is that like the spirits are here helping us, doing this, inspiring us, and you know the, the th everything that we're doing. I guess, um, but we might not know it. But to have people like actually <laughs> like uh, being, I don't know how, how they say it, like incorporated by a spirit, like a spirit sort of takes over their body and does it, I guess that's a little bit more rare, <laughs> you know, um, that's kind of a... Um, well, um, from my point of view, my studies that I, uh, that I run, I see a lot of manifestation with the spirits. Plus, there is this part that what Steve was talking about, uh, that they do it and people are not aware of. But there is another thing, is that the manifestation would, and already does, make people addicted to that, the phenomena, and we miss the point. We have a tendency to pay attention to the phenomena and get lost in the phenomena and we don't want any other thing but the phenomena. Chico Xavier uh, was a, a super advanced medium and he started doing uh, materialization. So he was donating ectoplasm and the spirits were manifesting, right? So they had this meeting. And in one of the meetings, Emmanuel shows up through Chico and said, this is the last meeting. You go study the books that, that Kardec wrote the books. You, you're not supposed to be here. Just seeing materialization. Go to your homes. There will be no more this kind of events. This is the last time. That's it. Get out. So... In the uh, years ago, like 50 years ago, starting with the Fox sisters in 1848, uh, it was a very common thing. The the what is the name of the thing? The the noises, the raps, and the manifestations of the spirit was a very common thing to catch our attention, to uh, to attract our attention to see. Hey, there is something else we need to study, but that's not the goal. The goal is just to say there is a spirit world and you should pay attention to it. But if human being nature, if if they can if can they stay with the phenomena forever and do not do anything else, they will. Oh, I just want to see the medium. And the medium is working their butt off. And doing all the work because that drains your energy. It's it's exhausting. And can you imagine all the energy that you catch in the room where everybody is looking at you? You already giving all your energy to exercise that work, and plus 
the magnetism of everyone in the room looking at you. Oh my gosh, this is a lot of work. And it's too much for one, one person. And if, if we have this phenomena, n nobody will want to study anymore. They just want to uh, show, show me, show me uh, the tricks you do. Show me the tricks. Oh, you can do materialization. You can paint. Uh, um, you can paint. You can paint. You can paint with your hands, with your with your feet, and that's what I want to see. And it's like a circus. It's, that's our nature. We want to see the show. Yeah, I guess if we had these doctors just like healing people of everything, then people yeah. probably would stop taking responsibility for yeah. themselves too. Exactly. You know, no, I mean the people I saw like really had real problems like cancer and things like mm -hmm. that. They were being right. Healed, but, but you know, this because there's so many like spiritualist groups too that do healing, and people just go week after week for more and more healing. It's exactly. Like, it's like there's nothing wrong with you. you know? Exactly. Like, like oh, I just want to feel good. You know. Exactly. <laughs> and, the, and they don't they don't really do anything. They don't for, don't don't work for others. Mm -hmm. They don't give it back to the community. They just want to receive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. So. And I am included in that too. If we receive too much, we don't want to give anymore. And I am included in that thought. <laughs> Um, I guess we can move on. Um, yeah. 27, um, how spirits manifest their noises and raps. Um, there's some spirits that go so far as to produce a racket, um, and some even cause real trouble and damage. Mm -hmm. um, I only, I thought of that movie, The Sixth Sense, when I, <laughs> when I read this, but I haven't really seen it, like, before, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. There's a lot of people too that are superstitious that, you know, like the wood creaks and wood does creak and they, they're like, there they are, there they are again, you know. <laughs> but, uh, there are some surveillance camera catching those uh, uh, furniture moving and uh, things falling. Which is very easy to fake too, though. Like, there was a, movie, there was a movie a few years ago. Uh, paranormal activity yeah and my friend took me to see it and I was like you could do all this stuff with string and a little you know yeah a, a little lighter and a little rubbing alcohol like a little you know it's like none of this stuff in here like couldn't be faked you know and, yeah and of course like everybody in the movie was all actors you know I, I like went home and looked it up and like sure enough they're all actors right <laughs> you know so so but but um so it's really hard with, with stuff like that so yeah um, I didn't really have much to say about 27. Um, when we get to 28, um, we're talking about the paraspirit, um, saying that even though we can't see the paraspirit, it is ethereal matter. Um, so it's for us, we, we wouldn't really even call it material like in our perception, but it is material from a spiritual perception that it's, you know, like where if a spirit sorry, not really a spirit, but like a, the soul is totally like non-matter. A, a, a paraspirit has at least some, is actually some type of, of matter, even though for us we mm. would just pass right through it. Um, I really like the word peri, because peri means around, and peri is spirit. I really like this word. It's really good. And it, I like it. it's cool and, and not cool at the same time. To think that the fairy spirit is the is the shape that my body becomes. So this the the fairy spirit already comes with the shape, and the body is going into that just like when we are baking a dough. I thought about. Um in the movie The Matrix, the first time he comes out of the Matrix and then they put him in like to show him like that it you know it's giving some tests and stuff and he, he wakes up in the Matrix and he's like, You see you're wearing your, your old clothes and everything. It's like that's just because your mind it like it res preserves your I forget what he calls it, like your um, uh, your image, you know, like your not reciprocal, something something you retain, like a retained image. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and but you know, they talk about the, um, this is actually where he talks about the paraspirit can undergo some sort of molecular modification, mm -hmm. renders it visible, visible or even tangible. Um, 
Okay, this explains how apparitions are produced. Uh, so it's not, it's kind of like, um, then I thought about the movie Ghost. <laughs> There's so many great like uh, movies about dead people. Mm. Um, <laughs> like in yeah. Ghost, in Ghost, he's actually able to like if he focuses his emotions, he's able to like manipulate objects in the real world. Um, so that, it's kind of an interesting. At least you know, even if it's if we don't take it like in a literal way, it gives us sort of like a way we can imagine how things might might work. Mm. Um, yeah, I was thinking that you know those movies and representations. Um, the, the streets may do that, but it's very hard for them. They have to make a, a huge effort. They um, need someone to donate it to Plaza. Yeah. In this so case, Demi Moore. Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> <laughs> so that also <laughs> explains <laughs> partly why we don't see, you know, Demi yeah, Moore. because they need to do someone to donate that. Um, energy, let's put it this way, that fluid, that energy, so they can do things, mm -hmm. they can move things. Can you imagine if you are one of those persons that that the, that produces a lot of ectoplasm, things will move around you, wherever you go, it will be... The blue skywalker. Spooky. <laughs> your job will be haunted, mm -hmm. your, your house haunted, Everywhere will be haunted because it's you. Yeah, as much as like I kind of sit like, oh man, I wish I could see some phenomena. It's like if it happens, <laughs> like, I hope I'm not alone when it happens. You know, like oh please. my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> you will run so fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, but in 29, like it's actually something I, I liked in here that I wanted to talk about. Uh -huh. He says the one, the ongoing and widespread sighting of spirits is extremely rare. But isolated apparitions are quite frequent, especially at the time of death. Um, then um, we say that liberated spirit seems to be in a rush to see its relatives and friends again, as if to advise them that it has just left the earth and to tell them that it is still alive. Um, and it's that any person can delve into his or her memories and see how many authentic incidents of this type, unperceived at the time, have occurred not only at night during sleep, but in broad daylight while awake. Um, so wow. I wanted to talk about that because, like, I, as I was like kind of going over this and looking for topics to talk about, I just met a friend. I, I hope they don't like have a hard time if, if I mention this. But my friend is an atheist, doesn't believe in God or anything, you know. And and we were talking, and she was telling me about somebody that died. And she had a dream about them and actually it happens to her quite frequently <laughs> when somebody dies she tends to dream about them mm -hmm. and like the and that the dreams are like really real to her like you know more than anything else and she you know couldn't really explain it um i thought that was interesting because i actually had a similar experience too um when i was in high school and somebody had died that i had a dream that we met and this is like long long before i you know we knew anything about spiritualism or spiritism and like I remember the dream like really vividly too and, and what happened and some of the things are just like it's kind of like the, the things he was saying were like I, like it couldn't have come from my subconscious <laughs> you know it had to be like it had to be like something that the guy would say so um, but I, I think it's interesting because even like non-believers can relate to this kind of idea that like you know when, when somebody is close to death you know, or, or especially if they've experienced like somebody in their life, like, you know, being there when somebody is making the transition, that they, it kind of changes, even if they're not really like a believer in religious, you know, principles, they, they sort of, without knowing it, sort of become a believer in spiritual principles, you know, and they, they have a hard time, that's why my friend was having a hard time putting it to words and talking about it, like without having the knowledge or the education about it. You know, it's just kind of like a, it's like a layman would, would sort of talk about things like, like oh, I felt a presence, or or um, I felt very like calm, I felt peaceful about it when when the person visited me in my dream, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's it's interesting, like it's it's like one of those things that I don't know. I started thinking like, okay, maybe I can 
Maybe I can cook my friend into spirits and work this way. <laughs> I would never do that, but um, but it, it seems to be like really common with a lot of people. Um, like I, I even heard just a couple months ago, I was listening to a guy, and he, he's an older guy, but he was talking about um, when his mother had passed away that he was in the room and you know like when she made the transition that he felt like she was still there with him and uh -huh. he felt really peaceful and calm about it and, uh -huh. you know it's like <laughs> it's like a lot of people um it changes their perception about about dying you know when they when they see that and feel that but at the same time it's like it's it's almost like they need <laughs> they they don't really know like exactly what's happening like they still don't know like exactly where the person's going or what they're going to do mm. but they they know it's not really like mm. nothing you know like the people that that would say like that we just die and we go to nothing um <laughs> they, they can't really say that anymore when they, they have these type of experiences mm -hmm. i was when you were reading this i'm like how much did this person had to study and research before write this statement that we are reading here the second paragraph of 29 I'm like this is pretty serious for someone to affirm mm -hmm. yeah, all I, this yeah. like Kardec is doing and also something that still puzzles me um, it's the the question of the matter. The idea we have of matter is not what matter is. Mm -hmm. It's quite different. Mm -hmm. So the idea that there is matter that we cannot perceive, but it's mm -hmm. still matter. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I think about somebody in 1850 or 60, uh, yeah. you know, something that I can't grasp today. Yeah with the knowledge we have in physics yeah, and everything. And, and the guy was talking like a pro. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, yeah, well, that's kind of what I just, um, it's, it's funny because he says isolated apparitions are quite frequent. really say that like I've known anybody to say that they've seen an apparition I know one guy who used a little <laughs> what is that you know he's a little, a little oh mm -hmm. I see you know, a good friend <laughs> of mine a good friend of mine talked about it one time but mm -hmm. that's probably the only uh, only one it's like I don't really but I've heard a lot of people talking about feeling presence and feeling you know good you know, you know Cause I guess I guess we have this culture that we fear death and that you know yeah. and death is like the worst thing we're supposed to be taboo, we're supposed taboo. to mourn it we're supposed to cry and yeah you know, and uh, and so when when a lot of people sort of talk about death like as we're going through life and we're learning and and the, their experience with it and when they talk about it in a way that's not sad you know then it's it's a little bit different it kind of catches your attention right. and right. And, and these are people I'm, t I'm saying they're not spiritists you know they're, they're just regular people that that have experienced you know um, loved ones that pass on and then yeah. they, they have these experiences that are like to to them or they seem more amazing than than um, what they would have expected you know we, we expect to feel a certain way and, oh. and what happens is that some, something different happens that we, we're not expecting oh. you know and I guess that's why we talk about it so much. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so we stay on the 29? Well, you know, it, it's, what time it's is it? 5 to 9. I don't know if you want to transition into the next section. Yeah, let's do it. For our friends, you know, Beyond the Borders. So we'll pick up next week on item 30. Okay. It's marked. And we'll change to the spirits.
book. I'm sorry, I forgot what question you're on. I know you now say that. Oh, we are on a 55. No worries, I'm going to read for us. So we go to the Spirit's book. If you have your Spirit's book on a fascinating topic, existence of multiple worlds. We are on the chapter 3. You mean like this the creation? World and... No. Okay. No, not that world. Okay. We are on the creation and uh, we, uh, we already read the creation of worlds, creation of living beings, population, populating the earth, Adam, diversity of a human race, and now we're going to read the existence of multiple worlds, and the last topic will be biblical account of creation. So let's go to the uh, question 55, and Kardec asks, are all the planets that re revolve in space inhabited are all the planets that revolve in this place inhabited and the spirits they answer yes and the people on earth are far from being the leaders in intelligence goodness and general development despite what they may believe there are many people who have such a high opinion of themselves and even believe that your little world alone has a privilege of being inhabited by intelligent beings. What an arrogant thought. They believe that God has created the universe only for them. And Kardec writes a note here that goes, God, let's remember that Kardec got many answers like this one so he kind of writes the note, notes based on, on those answers as well and resume everything so, so to help us to understand a little bit better God has populated planets Kardec says with living beings all of which have a role in the ultimate divine plan, plan. Believing that living beings are confined to the one point of the universe inhabited by us casts doubt out on God's wisdom. God has done nothing in vain and must have assigned a purpose to every other world that is more important than merely serving as a lovely backdrop for our planet. Furthermore, there is nothing in the position size or physical makeup on earth that warrants the assumption that it alone of the thousands of planets in the space has the privilege of being inhabited. As we know, we don't even we cannot even reach the the vast immense size of this the universe that we live in. We are far from we, we cannot even contact, at least that we, don't, that we know, right? If the government is hiding, we don't know. Uh, co uh, communication with other planets, which personally, my personal belief is that yes, the governments, they have the communication. That's my personal belief. But it doesn't really matter because that does not change ours. What, what is that? what impact that will have in our lives if, if we know today that the government is communicating with others. I know a lot of people they go crazy oh the government has has to show disclosure this and that and like overthrow the government but anyways <laughs> I respect I respect uh, everybody's opinion but we are the truth is we are very arrogant beings and for those that still believe that we are the only life the, the only inhabited planet that is sad it is sad that so many people still think like that that all the other planets and galaxies I mean 
have you seen the the size of the galaxy? I was taking notes, the amount of planets. Hold on. I'll see it right here. So the Milky Way diameter is a hundred million uh, light, light, years. light years. 200 billion stars. 200 billion stars. Mm -hmm. Some researchers say it's 400 billion stars. About trillion. I mean, only us no, science. living in the universe. Science, That's great. I think very much agrees that there's almost no way that we are the only intelligent life in the universe. So, yeah, the probabilities. It's, it's not common um, knowledge, but science is there already. So we we got that far. But I was thinking that um, there will be an impact when we have the certainty and proof of that. Uh, there will be an impact on... on what would that be? What, what, what kind of impact, impact do you think? I think that's what I was thinking. I think it will be an impact similar to when we finally accepted that the uh, sun does not revolve around the earth, so that the earth is not the most important thing, and the place where we live is not the most important thing, not even in the solar system. So that happened about 500 years ago, uh, or 400 and something, whatever. Um, and it was, I think, had a big, a big impact, uh, because from that thought, uh, from the acceptance of that idea, um, we, the humankind, uh, or at least our part of uh, the world, our um, Western civilization, uh, we were able to um, get out of uh, that very limiting thought and open up many, many options and possibilities. Um, that, you know, in, in first in philosophy and then it, when it expanded. Uh, overflowed it to science and, and many other developments. So I think the impact that it's going to have is going to be similar to that. So I was thinking about um, Genesis when we were talking about that and how so many people still interpret the book of Genesis you know, from the Bible literally. And so if we talk about life on other planets, even actually the fact that there are other planets, really, if somebody is really literally hooked on Genesis, that's going to bother them, <laughs> you know. So uh, if we talk, if they say, well, we're not the only ones, so, like, I think that religious fanatics would, would fear that that would cause a wave of atheism, you know, if, they, if they're unable to control um, the, the knowledge that's out there and it, it, if, if they feel it contradicts like what they're preaching so it's another kind of case like you say when we talk about Galileo where, where religion has to accept science and, and you know like be like a sister to science where we don't have to you know where we can say like we're learning more we know more than we knew 2,000 years ago or, or 4,000 years ago or whatever <laughs> that, that we, can, we can have both things together but still believe that there's a central intelligence in the universe that, that created all these things according to natural laws. Um, Why do you think it bothers so much? What do you think? What's your opinion? Well, no, I mean, if, if somebody if somebody held on the literal interpretation of Genesis saying that where it says things like God created man to rule over the, the animals and the fish and and you know, like God created man in His own image. Um, even even things like we, like the creation of the earth. The earth is like here, and there's was separated from the waters above and the waters below. Like the earth's not even really round in Genesis yet, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's that's why I w I was raised religious, and after a certain time, I was just like I I can't I can't buy this anymore. So instead of saying like 
well, I'm going to keep the parts that make sense and or whatever, you know. I actually just said, like, I'm just going to let go of all of it, you know, because I felt like it was an all or nothing kind of thing at, at, oh, at that oh. time in my life, you know. Um, but what, what do you guys think? Uh, why is it, what does it bother us so much? What does it bother to know that there is life in different planets? What, do you, what is you guys' opinion? I think a lot of people are afraid, like, you know, most of the time when aliens visit us in movies, they're not doing anything nice, they're not helping us, you know, like an Independence Day. Oh, so you think people buy the idea that they are all bad? They're here, they're, they're going to try to take our planet over, you know, they're going to just use us to, as like workers, they're going to farm us, you know, like things like that. That's, that's a lot of ideas, you know, there's a couple, I, I watch like, too many movies, you know. People is afraid that they're gonna do what they're already doing. They're afraid that, that they're sense. gonna do to us like what we would do to them. Like if we found right. them first, right. we would just totally yeah. like oh, colonize yeah. them, manipulate and terraform them. Yeah. And we would just enslave, enslave, them. enslave them. Because that would be ethical to us, because they're not yeah. human, so we can you know But that's why we can't do it. Do unto because aliens as you would do unto humans. Yeah. Even if they are legal or illegal aliens, I think that it is because we are afraid to learn that, as as the spirits they say here, there are different civilization. There are smarter than us, better than us. Mm -hmm. They're more kind, more advanced, with, more with advanced. Alien envy. Yeah, <laughs> and. We, you know, we want to, we prefer to believe that we are the only ones in this vast universe. The only ones. That's pretty sad. That's, that's very childish. <laughs> that's a sad thought. Childish. Like, like, like yeah, crying babies, uh, like, I do have, I'm the only one. I had that thought when I was a child, um, kid. You were? And, and, the only yeah. and I'm not the only one who had that thought that everything was really strange. revolving. Yeah, and when I wasn't there, there was nothing. I bet Steve was like that. I thought it was pretty important. <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? You see? He, he thinks he is his. Oh universe and like in his <laughs> zone and the whole universe revolves around him. Yeah, there are a lot of people that think like that. Yeah. Even spiritualists. Yeah, it's, absolutely. Yeah, all the spiritualists were telling me that I created all this, you know, the, the things that are in my life that I don't like, I created them. And I'm like, I don't know if I, if it was up to me, I wouldn't create all these things, you know. But they, they, they swear that I, I did that and I'm manifesting all of this stuff around me and the people I meet, they're all my manifestations. I'm like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, how did I manifest you if you manifested me? Like, we, now if you, if you talk about like we attracted each other, right. that makes sense to me. Like, we, right. and you know, cause, cause that, that sort of seems to agree thing. with, with the way things work. Right. Like, the whole manifesting thing. Right. Like, it is. It is seems just, a little arrogant to But me. I, I, I translate when I hear my friends talking about the manifestation thing. I translate in my mind to the what we are learning because it makes more sense to me mm -hmm. than me manifesting the things and and. Uh, they're, they're not a hundred percent like wrong. Right. Right. Like there's a little bit of truth to it. Uh, like you know, but like to 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 make it like black and white and it's right. just not. It doesn't work for me. Right. Exactly. But, but I mean, it's interesting to think about other, you know, other cultures and. Well, we will, we will reach one day that, and we will be back here or in another planet, where uh, it will be part of life, the communication with other planets, with other lives. Are you guys prepared for that? Mhm. Mm I just watched a movie the other day. Here it comes. If it is in a movie, he's prepared. He's prepared. If, if the, Hitchhiker's, okay. the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. I watched it again last weekend, and I, f I think I'm ready, you know. The first time I saw it was a long time ago, and I wasn't ready for it then, but now I saw it again, and I'm like, I think I can handle it. 
By the way, you gave me the, you told me, you gave me a, a, a DVD with a movie. I, you didn't. You didn't give me the movie. That movie, so, you know? Which one? I gave you two you said, DVDs. Exactly. So, you Man, said. Man had a movie. You said, oh, this has the movie. No, it has no movie in there. It's okay. Yeah, our friends. Uh, the movie with the guy with the with the the bed sheets that you was talking about how the world the world you said you gave me a copy but you didn't give me any copy. That's fine. That's fine. Give it back. Okay, let's go to the fifty six. Do all planets have the same physical constitution? No, they do not resemble one another at all. So with that, so they answered the simple question, but with that, it's like, what kind of, what do they resemble? What is, what is their kind? Well, it's what makes us think that it's everything. It could be uh, aquatic types, so like a, 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 in the water types of bodies, in the air, like those that can fly. There's so many, it's like endless, endless, Mathematic possibilities. It's really hard to imagine um, life on Jupiter, knowing that Jupiter is made of gas. If you think that it's got to be like like this, you know. Right. Because we, we, in our body, we can't go in a ship and like land on Jupiter and like get out or breathe or do like exist on Jupiter at all. Yeah, you know, it's really sad. But you know, we have to. <laughs> I so with spiritism, I imagine that the life on Jupiter is totally different than the way that we are, you know, much more ethereal. And to mm -hmm. them, like Jupiter might be like totally, mm -hmm. you know, they might exist on the surface of it or they might, you know, I don't mm -hmm. know, it probably looks a lot different to them than it looks to mm -hmm. us, you know. Oh, this book, I don't think it's translated to English. Uh, letters of a dead person is the Chico Xavier's mother, she came and she wrote about life on Mars. It's not in English, right? That's a very, very, very interesting book. And she gives details about the life on Mars. Mars or Jupiter? Mars. There's also a movie with Matt Damon where he goes to Mars. Um, <laughs> that's kind of different. <laughs> anyway, so endless possibilities, no, but it's, right? No, but it, but hold on, it's interesting because um, he he goes to Mars with the Earth idea of life, so he tries to you know grow potatoes and all those things. Really? Yeah, you saw the movie. Did I? I saw the movie. You saw the movie. Um, but that that's the thing that um, again 160 years ago we were being told, and. It, there's no way we're gonna find it if we're trying to look for exactly the same thing we have here. Mm -hmm. And if we think on, on, you know, on those terms, um, and it, to me it goes back to the idea of matter and how we know very little about matter. So the many kinds of matter that there are and we don't even know about. And all those may, you know, make different types of uh, of life in other places, and it could be super intelligent life, for all we know. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I wanted to say potato. No, I'm I'm good now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. If, if, you, if you had a camera that could see like the Perispirit, you know, like everybody has like the app on their iPhone for the the Aura app. Right. But if you really could like have a camera that could see auras and you yeah. went to Mars, you'd probably see, you know, yeah. auras. Well, when we reach that point, I guess we will be a little bit better than we are right now. Less judgmental, less, because can you imagine if we are able to perceive the very spirit, the astral body or the live body, whatever you want to call kind of scary, kind of scary to see the scars and the marks and the things that we have on that. 
But how would we sound to other people though? Like let's say somebody coming in here that's like not a spirit. I wonder sometimes when we have new people in here and we start talking about stuff like this, like do we sound crazy to them? Like we're yes, talking we about do. people like yeah. life on Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We must sound nuts. Totally. <laughs> Yeah. Or no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe not. But maybe that's like, the reason why when I became a spiritist, I lost all my friends. No, no. It's not the reason. <laughs> I didn't have friends before either. So. Uh, I, I was, I was telling you about these pod podcasts that I was um, listening today, mm -hmm. and. They were talking about these things, and uh, as far as I know, there, it was a panel of, I don't know, three, four, five people. Um, some had been contacted by, uh, um, uh, by extraterrestrials, and some not. But anyway, in any case, none of those were um, spiritists, per se. Um, and, and everything they were talking about was perfectly in line with everything we're reading here mm -hmm. and with many things we can read from um, from other um, spiritist books uh, being sacrificed or you know who, who are uh, just tell stories about it and even with names and dates and all the specific things that we're not reading here, but um, they were saying exactly the same things, and they're not spiritists. So there are a lot of people that are talking yeah. very similar to what mm -hmm. we're talking, but uh, the, the, their basics the, the they're based on uh, you know accounts. They're not. We are based on. Spirits. It's another source of information. It's to me, it's a reliable source of information, <laughs> but uh, which is which is the same thing. If because if people are talking about similar things and could not be different, because if it's true, it's true everywhere. It's not only true here. What I mean is that maybe those people coming here would not be that surprised. Maybe they would, but maybe maybe not. They yes. are. They are. Yeah. You know, uh, what I kind of want to talk about, though, was, okay. like, we were talking about mediumship and insanity, and when I yeah. hear people talking about, yeah. like, non-spiritists talking about contacting other life forms and stuff, I immediately assume that they must be crazy, you know, and it, it's, it's hard, because it's hard, because it's like, well, we're sitting here saying that it's true and it, it's right, but then, like, when I... Because some of them, I don't know, like, like, there was this girl, like, and my friend shared it, like, a YouTube video, he's like, watch this. And she was talking about how the, the reptilian invasion of our planet, mm -hmm. the reptiles are invading this planet, and, like, she had this crazy look in her eyes, and I was like, this girl is insane, like, she needs medicine. Oh, you know? maybe she's passionate about. Maybe she's a reptile. Yeah, she might have been. You know, but. Okay, let me read the other one. So there is more trouble coming here for us. Okay, 57. As the physical constitution of the various planets is not the same for all, do the beings inhabiting those worlds have a different type of body and physical makeup? So Kardec asks, as the physical constitution of the various planets is not the same for all, do the beings inhabited, in, inhabiting those worlds have a different type of body and physical makeup yes. and the spirits say of course just as fish in a world are designed for living in the water and birds for the air and uh, the same thing we think this is oh my gosh no way right this idea is so uh, crazy I don't want to believe that we forget the meaning sides of the story uh, the uh, the love that this divine creation is expressing itself everywhere with many different types 
and styles of lives, of conditions that we can manifest ourselves and have different opportunities to grow and to develop spiritually speaking. So, and the same thing goes to the uh, in, uh, different inhabited planets. So, when we think, when a lot of people saying, oh, this is crazy, no, this, is, I, this idea is crazy. So, this is a very selfish uh, line of thought, as we are arrogant and selfish beings. But, on the other hand, it's like, why not, if, if this love is in a level that I cannot perceive, I cannot understand, of course it could be, because if this universe loves me, and it was designed to love me, then of course I will have support everywhere, and endless opportunities, and endless type of support I will get. Of course, absolutely. So this is one side, one face of of this story that the spirits are telling us here. You know, there are endless uh, opportunities for you to manifest yourself, to evolve, to recreate your reality, to understand about life. That's not only one way, and that's the human being that you are. Any thoughts? Agree. What do you guys think? When you listen to this, that what I just read, of course, just as fish, uh, your as fish in a world is just are designed for living in the water and the birds for the air. What is the first thing that come up to your mind? Well, I, I think about like if we want to go, if like this is just a bad example. If I wanted to go underwater, I'd have to put on scuba gear. And if we want to go into space, we have a space suit. But if you think of your body as like an Earth suit, and then on other planets, you know, you would just, you know, we're going to shed our body when we when we die, but we'll put on another body when we reincarnate on another planet. Then we'll have another suit. Yeah. You know? Good analogy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good analogy. That's so true. Okay, I'll read the last one. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. I was thinking that we are very conditioned, um, or that's what the spirits say, that we are very conditioned uh, because of our physical body, that it really is a heavy weight and that yeah. limits us yeah. in many aspects. So what I was thinking yeah. is um, we know some ways of expressing love that are mostly related to our physical condition um, even if it's you know this kind of uh, spiritual love um, feeling thing energy but still if you think about it it's mostly related to our condition our physical body um, so I was thinking the enormous ways of expressing love that there must be in all those planets uh, because they have different um, physical conditions and that we don't know about it. Mm -hmm. and that just made me happy to think mm -hmm. about how many ways of expressing yeah. love there yeah. are that we don't know about and that we may discover yeah. one day definitely yeah, and we can, we can, we could, if we want to, we could exercise uh, the uh, during uh, our sleep. We could go and visit different planets if we, right? If we exercise our spiritual development, because that it uh, can be very limiting for some people. But I, we we learn from the spirits that really. A few spirits can go to different planets, but if we are dedicated, we we can get in touch with those uh, friends from brothers and sisters from different planets, and we can even visit them, or at least have a sense of that type of life, that type of lifestyle, and 
the type of, of uh, the things that they do. There are some spiritist books talking about this. It's really cool. There is one book called Renunciation. You have you have this book, no? It's by Emmanuel and Chico Xavier. So I don't have it. But, yeah. This girl, this girl came from Jupiter. She came from Jupiter, and she was a very. Uh, her name was Alcyone, and she was very evolved in spirit. And she came here to help one of the souls that was is still incarnating here to help him. That was she was amazing. Yeah, Lord she of was the... amazing. She she was she incarnated in in Paris. I don't remember the the, the year. Let me read the last one before we go. Yeah, Tolkien had one of those stories too. Huh? Say again. Tolkien had one of those stories in a book. Oh really? Like before the Lord of the Rings and before the Hobbit. Oh. Yeah. So the last one, the fifty-eight, is are the planets farthest removed oh I remember when I read this this question for the first time I don't know why it shocked me so much I was like you know when you get speechless one of those things that you read in the spirit book you get that's amazing this is one of them so are the planets farthest removed from the Sun deprived of life and heat since the sun only appears to be a tiny star to them? And the spirits answered, Are, are you assuming that, that there are no other sources of light and heat than the sun? Are you completely dismissing electricity, which in some worlds plays a role unknown to you, and which is much more important than the role it plays on earth? Besides, how do you know? that the beings of those worlds see the same way you do with organs like yours I was like wow I remember and Kardec Kardec's note uh, says the condition of existence for beings inhabiting different worlds must be adapted to the world in which they are destined to live if we had never seen fish we won't be able we would not be able to comprehend how any living being could survive in water. That's happened to me when I look at Steve. This same idea applies to all the other worlds, which most likely contain elements that, that are unknown to us. On our own planet, the long polar nights are illuminated by the electrical displays of the Aurora Borealis, commonly called the northern lights. It is impossible to imagine that electricity may be more abundant in other worlds compared to ours and play the role that we role that we cannot even find. It's a question. I'm so sorry. I'll read it again. Is it impossible to imagine that electricity may be more abundant in other worlds compared to ours and play a role that we cannot even uh, what how do you pronounce this word fathom. fathom 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 comprehend comprehend uh, fathom fathom uh, fathom thank you according to this uh, argument those worlds could contain different sources of heat and light required by their inhabitants well when kardec wrote this book we didn't have the solar panels right did we? No, right? No. We don't have any solar panels, so this is another choice. Actually, the the letters of a dead person, she talks about solar panel. She talks about this source of light that we didn't know on Earth, and she describes a little bit like a kind of a solar panel. Very interesting. Okay. Thank you very much. So we'll meet again here next week. Yes. Same bad time, same bad channel. Yes. We will talking about amazing things, mm -hmm. crazy things. <laughs> Are you giving a lecture tomorrow? Or is it yeah, tomorrow? I am actually. Okay. I'll be busy then. Okay. 
No problem. So it's gonna be the <laughs> So it will be uh, the part two of this series of the four missionaries of light talks about the missionaries of the light. So we've been talking about pretty amazing stuff because that book is amazing. Missionaries of the light tomorrow at eight fifteen Eastern Standard Time. Come here, come to the Broad Spirit Society, it's a wonderful place to be. 915 in Brazil. Yeah, <laughs> if you cannot come uh, in person, watch watch on our Facebook page. But if you if you have the distinguished opportunity to come, come and then afterwards there is a wonderful magnetic energy work here in, on uh, uh, Broad Spirit Society. Invite someone, come visit us. And they actually have one of the top three magnetizers in the world. Right. That participates in there. So exactly. I hear good things. Legendary. <laughs> so, yeah. Legendary Train. Steve McPherson. Trained in the lineage of Jacob Mello. <laughs> <laughs> so, good so, stuff. And, it's all good stuff. And, and arrogant and everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, all good. So uh, let's do the. Uh, okay. The thing. The prayer. Are you going to do it? You said you want to do it. Do you want me to do it? I said let's do it. Okay. Send me to one of us. Okay. I'll do it. Okay. Let's connect with each other's hearts, each other's mind. And let's get together in this prayer. Imagining that from our hearts, this light with love and compassion is coming out and joining the other good spirits that are here present with us and the other spirits that came to pray with us, that came to study with us. And we become this spot of light with compassion, respect and patience from one another, for one another. And as we join forces, and as we join energies, it becomes this, this, this spot of light becomes huge, even bigger than this building, and expands itself. And reach the waters of our oceans, and reach the other continents. And as our love grows, we want to Hug each and every one on this planet, incarnate and discarnate. We can do this. We can spread out the energy, wishing to the whole planet peace and harmony. That's what we wish for everyone tonight. And may the fluids and the energies that come out from this prayer and this study group may be of any use or any kind of of good elements for the good spirits that may be working on people's healing may our thoughts and intention reach all the friends, sisters, and brothers' hearts, especially those that are in pain in the hospital, those that are in prisons, those that are, they lost themselves, they have no faith in themselves or in anything. Because after we receive all those teachings, we feel like giving back giving back to this planet, this wonderful planet. Thank you so much. All this wonderful energy that embracing us, that is embracing us tonight. And may we come back here to renovate, to refresh our energy, and to move forward in this in lifetime, in this reincarnation, may be the best one of all. Thank you and so be it. So be it.